all of us have like this really flawed decision-making like ability. It's really flawed. We're, we're ruled by biases. Um, our brains are hardwired these shortcuts that don't always work that well. And not to mention, we're also emotional. So to me, managing all this, especially through decision-making process, is both interesting and extremely challenging. Hi, Scott. So thank you so much for being here today. So first, can you uh, please introduce yourself and your career journey to our viewers? Sure. So my name is Scott Thompson, um, and I'm a pension actuary. And where to start with my career? Um, I've been at this for 15 years. Um, when uh, when I interviewed for the role I'm in now, I was literally in the middle of the season wow, when I was competing for the national bobsled team. There was unfortunately no opportunities for me at the time, but a few months later there was, and I was happy to take any employment then. I think it's fair to say that my career started slow. I, I'd taken you know, over a year off to compete and I'd never worked in an office setting before, but I worked with some really extraordinary people that challenged me, mentored me, and, and took the time to help me learn what I needed to know to do my job. Early on in my career, I also had a few opportunities that I think I really benefited from. So number one, I took a short term, I took short term placements in Tokyo and Sao Paulo. Uh, the idea was that I was transferred there during their busiest times in order to help with resourcing. Um, and while in Tokyo in particular, I worked very hard. Uh, they needed a lot of help, but I was exposed to some really complex accounting activities, literally on a daily basis that I might only see once a year while I was in Canada. Uh, number two, I was I always said yes to taking on new projects. And well, this sometimes meant that I put a little bit too much on my plate, whose eyes aren't always bigger than their stomachs. Um, it also exposed me to some really unique projects and clients that expanded my limits and my knowledge. Number three, I, I kind of mentioned this already, but I think it needs to be said again. I worked with some peers and mentors that are truly extraordinary. Um, talking about my journey also wouldn't be complete without mentioning my exams, um, whose actuarial journey isn't. After completing my preliminary exams, I, I kind of just stopped writing. Um, maintaining discipline and progress through those exams is very challenging, and stopping is easy. Uh, I was also very fortunate that it didn't actually limit my career. I was building good relationships with my clients, and I was continuing to develop the skills I needed to become a pension consultant. And I met my wife and I helped her fail an exam. <laughs> I realized the only way to, to not be a distraction to her was to begin writing again for myself. And after several more years of exams, we were both signing actuaries. Um, we actually would have both become actuaries at the same time, but uh, she was like eight months pregnant when I went off and did the facts. So uh, anyway, I finished first. Um, and had like probably like a 10 year head start on her or something like that. But um, and she, she got her designation shortly after. Once I had some experience under my belt, I have had some opportunities to manage and mentor analysts. And I'd say that that's a role I'm very passionate about. Maybe that's because of my background in sports and later in coaching, but it brings me joy to be a part of someone's development. Um, I believe that people respond to the expectations that are placed on them and mentors can play a very valuable role in helping individuals expand their own expectations of themselves and what they can achieve. Um, these days, I mean, I, I work with some really outstanding colleagues and clients, so, so I enjoy what I do. There are different challenges every day and there's always new opportunities to explore and grow, um, and, and including just, uh, I was just this last fall, I was given a new role um, of our growing our Western business in Western Canada a wealth business in Western Canada, sorry. And uh, it's new for me, and there are different expectations on me that I've had in the past, but I am enjoying this kind of new direction that career is taking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing. And then like uh, with your background in sport and coaching and stuff, it's definitely unique uh, for, you see, for the typical like actual career path. But I'm glad you found the path and I'm sure you are uh, happy being an actuary as well. Yeah. I am. 
Yeah, and uh, so I think as an actuary, like um, people can typically choose between uh, working in an insurance company or like a consulting company. So uh, was there any particular reason uh, made you to decide to work in consulting? Yeah, Mercer hired me. <laughs> I, I, I say that half jokingly, but honestly, at the beginning, I didn't really know what consulting was. And like Google and my textbooks saved me from asking a lot of really, I'll say remedial questions. Like I don't say stupid, but really remedial questions. Um, and in fact, like when I started leading some of our recruiting efforts and doing those you know, student nights, one of my objectives in speaking with students was to really actually help them better understand what consulting was. Because I don't think that I knew, I, I just didn't have that perspective coming out of, uh, coming out of university. What's kept me here? Um, well, one, different challenges every day. And I, I know that that's cliche, but you know, no two days are the same. Um, and, and I regularly have to venture way outside of my knowledge base in order to help my clients. Uh, there's, along with that comes constant opportunities to grow and learn. Uh, I think that there's a lot of there's a there's a lot of thought out there that we should all be lifelong learners. And fortunately, I'm in a job that allows me to always do that. Um, clients come to me to solve their problems in consulting. Like that's what you are as a problem solver. I love doing that, and I also really love observing other problem solvers. And there are plenty of people like that in our field that are developing new and innovative solutions to address issues that arise. Um, and lastly, like have a, a competitive spirit at the end of the day. And there's always those competitive opportunities. So there are competitive opportunities in my job. If it's just, I don't know, getting something done, I had a budget or uh, I mean, you know, just or, or winning new business from 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 maybe an, an, another uh, firm that's out there. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, like uh, I, I agree. Like sometimes, like the newer um, or the aspiring actuaries like don't have enough knowledge um, on like what the different paths or opportunities available for uh, within the actual profession. And then sometimes it's just like uh, what will be will be right. So you get your first opportunity and then like it's really about like whether you enjoy being in it and then you're staying there or you're deciding to make a move but I think once we're in the profession and we continue to learn and grow and stuff like I think any direction any path is it will be rewarding absolutely mm -hmm. so um now that you've been like in consulting in your work for for a long time uh so like how is the work differently when like one goes from like the analyst and associate level to like more the principal and stuff like how is that path sure so i mean quite simply like at the beginning your sole job as an analyst is to learn and grow like learn and grow for yourself as a consultant you become an agent for your business, right? So at the end of the day, you're all kind of, you're all part of, of delivering the same solution. But a lot of times when you're a consultant, you're, you're thinking more proactively about what your clients need. Uh, your, when it comes to the problem solving, you're also the part of the process for actually defining what the problems are with your clients. Um, Whereas like when you're an analyst and you're learning, you're, you're really taking a lot more direction from the, the you know, we'll say the principals in the office. Um, and, and, and while taking that direction and helping to develop, you know, be a part of the, the solution that they're delivering. I think the other thing too, that when you're you know, a principal um, and, and the expectations are, like I said, you're an agent for the business. And so part of that comes with a lot more of like the business duties that come with that. So managing the relationships with clients, handling the bills, handling, you know, the invoicing that needs to go out the door. Um, and, and part of that, and you're also part of, uh, part of the hiring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you find like most interesting and also like most challenging uh, during your whole career journey so far? Yeah. So for me, the answer is the same to both. What's interesting and challenging to me is the human element of my work. 
So at this stage of my career, clients see me as an expert in my field of pensions, right? So a lot of my consulting process is about putting myself in their shoes and helping set the, that direction about what I think is best for their organization. At some point, this will involve us getting, like will need us to get approval from for some action, activity, decision, whether whatever from either, I mean, maybe it's from them, maybe it's from the pension committee, maybe it's even from the board. And this decision-making, like that's where this human element comes in. And I don't mean to make this sound too dramatic, but like all of us have like this really flawed decision-making like ability, it's really flawed. We're, we're ruled by biases. Um, our brains are hardwired, these shortcuts that don't always work that well. And not to mention, we're also emotional. So to me, managing all this, especially through decision-making process, is both interesting and extremely challenging because I have to manage you know, all of that, all of these kind of blind spots that are on their side and also have to manage them myself because I have these same problems too, right? Um, and, and when we talk about the human element too, like there, there are other aspects that can be incorporated under that, that umbrella as well. So when a client comes to me with a problem, one of the first things I need to do is actually make sure that the problem that they are coming with is the problem that we are trying to resolve. Like that's, I mean, that's kind of consulting 101, but you think that it's, 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 it's just not something to, to, to take for granted. So this requires asking really effective questions and never jumping to conclusions. Also, my work is with other people and a critical part of being a consultant is building relationships. I think of myself as a social introvert. And so honestly, there are days where I am just an introvert first and I'd really rather just hide away, do my work and not be social, but I, but I can't. So getting around myself and, and you know, that, and in, in that in, in being, you know, faking like I'm extroverted can actually be really challenging. Yeah, I totally can relate with the uh, with your part when you say that like social introvert because uh, stereotype or not, I think a lot of actuaries are <laughs> introvert and then we'll have that sort of like why the work appealing to us in the first place. But then in order to be like a well-rounded actuary, we need to develop like I say like the relationship. We, we're not we're not working by ourselves anymore because like really to help add value and put in help other people with the decision making like it's the communications is the relationship that we need to build and stuff to understand other people problem and you know to solve it so it's it's not a one person job <laughs> yeah so now if you could go back to like many many years ago in university is there anything that you would have done differently or what advice would you have given yourself I'm I'm lucky. I don't. I, I mean, not lucky. I mean, I don't think I have too many regrets. Um, but I would I would have told myself to be more social and make more friends. Um, a lot of my best friends now in the industry are people that I started with. Right? Like they they came into their careers at this at the same time or starting at the same time as me, and we've all grown together. Well that's almost like an opportunity missed for me there that I missed out on in university that I, I wasn't that social. I just kind of kept to myself and un it's not unfortunate. Like I, I've since made friends with a lot of people that I went to school with, but you know, from time to time when I'm looking on LinkedIn, I see people that I went to school with and I'm wondering what they're doing and can't help but wonder what it might've been like if I'd actually kind of uh, you know, started a friendship earlier on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the good thing about the actual community is like um, we volunteer and then uh, it's, it's still, I would say it's still a small community. So there's lots of opportunity <laughs> to make great uh, relationship and friendship and such. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thank you so much for again being here today and sharing with us on about like your journey and everything. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Thank you.